Good evening or good morning, depending where you are. Uh, this is another edition of uh, Prime Cuts from the Midnight Hour. It's Will Cooper here. I'm in the Sereno Cigar Company studio, burning the midnight oil, bringing to you Prime Cuts number 17. Uh, my solo podcast, the things I kind of can just do on my own here. And um, what, we've been, what we started doing a few days ago was actually recapping uh, the Cigar of the Year countdown. Oops. That's a little echo there, which is not good. <laughs> um, but uh, we, we're recapping the Cigar Coop uh, Cigar of the Year countdown. Uh, we recapped uh, a few days ago picks 26 to 30. And today I'm going to recap um, picks 21 to 25. So... If you're keeping score at home, the Cigar Coop Cigar of the Year Countdown has revealed the first 10 of the 30 picks. So we're one-third of the way through. So, you know, it's kind of interesting when I look at the countdown. You know, it's kind of like this – The every day, you know, there's a cigar I, I unveil, and this road kind of um, – the road just kind of moves forward. Uh, and you have to kind of keep up with it, so to speak. You know, it seems like I reveal the cigar, and then I'm kind of prepping the next cigar to make it on the list – so it's kind of an interesting thing, and, and, and it goes a lot faster these 30 days than, than you would think, uh, especially from my point of view. Um, what's interesting is I put the list together, um, and it's a process that starts uh, once the cigar year closes out at um, Thanksgiving, and it's a, a several-week process. But it actually started a little before that, and that I'm re-smoking the cigars. But as I'm compiling the list, I don't really think about – who's on or who's off i don't think about anything i don't think about the numbers as of yet i don't think about how many cigars this company got on i don't think about whether this cigars company's not going to have one on i don't think about how um many are from the dominican republic i don't think about how many robustos or toros or line extensions made it but once the list and i start going through the list i kind of start thinking about it and I kind of start looking at the stats, so to speak. Um, the big stat that stood out of me for the first five was um, there was a good influence of Maduro's I had in that 26 to 30. And there was also a sort of a Nicaraguan-centric push in that three of those five cigars were from Nicaragua, one from Honduras, and one from the Dominican Republic. So... What we'll do is we'll just do a quick recap of what those five cigars were, um, and then we'll kind of get into the, what the five cigars that have been revealed since the last show. So we're going to kind of fly through the first ones pretty quickly here, um, and then we'll move forward. So hopefully folks could see the PowerPoint, um, because this is a, you know, we do things with PowerPoint here at midnight uh, on Prime Cuts. Um, so... The first cigar that we're looking at is the Tarano Vault, and specifically what we're looking at from the Tarano Vault is the E21. Um, it's a it was the it was a cigar released by Tarano this year. Um, it's been called the Blue the Vault Blue. Um, it landed Tarano back on the list for the first time in three years. They've been they've been a staple of the uh, the list, so um, they made that list um, at number thirty. <laughs> Sorry about that. I have too many screens open sometimes. Number 29. Okay, there we go. E.P. Carrillo returned to the uh, countdown with the E.P. Carrillo, e. Carrillo Original Rebel Rebellious 54. Um, and uh, so very good cigar, good broadleaf cigar by Ernesto Perez Carrillo Jr. We talked about that last time. Um, Southern Draw, Jacob's Ladder, Robusto, a cigar that came out late in the year. Uh, big, another a broadleaf cigar by Robert Holt. Uh, and Southern Drawer Cigars comes in at number 28. This cigar is a real powerhouse. It's a meaty, flavorful, strong powerhouse cigar. Number 27, a cigar that is kind of a little under the radar, but everyone who's smoking it really likes it. Rancho Luna Maduro Robusto by JRE Tobacco Company. They're the folks uh, who make Aladino. It's the Oroa family. Uh, that's Julio Oroa. Uh, who is the father of Christian Aroa, is running the company. And in addition, Julio's other son, Justo, runs JRE Tobacco with him. Vertically integrated operation, and this is uh, the Rancho Ludo Maduro Robusto. And number 26 is the Black Works uh, Studio Sindistri Toro. 
So it's the second year in a row Black Orc Studio makes the list. So without further ado, let's kind of move forward and see what some of the picks were coming in at um, at tonight. Um, I see some people are embracing the Joe's embracing the midnight PowerPoint. Yeah, you got to do it. You got to do it. If you're gonna be up at midnight, you gotta just get PowerPoint. I mean, there's no way around it. Uh, but uh, yeah, gotta do PowerPoint. Uh, this is the only show that does PowerPoint that we do. So let's go to number twenty-five, and we have the boys. Uh, the boys are back. Protocol Themis Toro by Cubata Caño Cigar Company. Um, that's one cancel. Bill Ives, um, they land at number 25 for the second year in a row. And their Connecticut Shade release has qualified them into the top 25 two years in a row. Small company. Um, they'll tell you they're small. Um, they're very proud of the work they're doing. They've done some great work. And they land in at number 25 with their first Connecticut Shade offering. Uh, their third partner, Bill Agathus, had more of a hand in this as well as he was looking for a Connecticut Shade cigar. So it's the second year in a row that the uh, Cubata Caño boys land on the top 25, at the 25 spot. And, you know, our list, because we look at other factors like distribution and if folks have kind of seen if this cigar has been in people's hands before, a little tougher for a smaller company to make the list. Um we try to balance it, or I try to balance it, because this is my list. So I, we, as I here, I try to balance it the best I can, but it is a little tougher. And the idea is, you know, we want to kind of get the cigars of people uh, into people's hands that they've had, uh, but we don't want to exclude smaller companies either. Um, and Cabal Caño has done some solid work. And I think you look at those Juan Cancel posts with how many lists they're making, um, it's real. I mean, these cigars are really, really good cigars, and they could be staples of lists for a long time. You know, um, so it's just, you know, I think they're just on a really good path there. Uh, but a great job by the Cabarra Caño boys. This is a cigar made at the La Zona factory in Esteli, Nicaragua, a.k.a. the that's the Alpha Dogs uh, factory, Eric Espinosa. Um, and, you know, like I said, it is their first Connecticut Shade cigar. Uh, beautiful. That, that Connecticut Shade wrapper is really beautiful, and it just shines with the gold accents around the banding. So just uh, they did a great job on this cigar overall. Uh, I remember having this cigar in Nicaragua. I can tell you this cigar ages really, really good, which is something I do look at as well in terms of, you know, that's why I think it's important for a cigar to be out for several months uh, before anointing it a cigar of the year. And this cigar's been out for several months, but when you start – Putting cigars in around two weeks and, and calling it cigar, yeah, I, I don't think it works. Uh, that's just that's just my opinion. It can can, it, can I, I'm saying it doesn't work at all? No, I'm not saying that, but I think it's hard for it to work. And this cigar, why it's so worthy of being on the list is I know what this cigar has been doing with age right now. I know it's just it's it's peaking. It's what maybe has yet to peak, I should say. So I know there's a great upside with this cigar. I bank on this cigar, box worthy cigar all the way in my book. Um, you know, definitely a cigar you want to get a, your hands on. Number twenty four. Um, disclaimer: It uh, these um, MLB Cigar Ventures is a sponsor of Cigar Coop. That doesn't play into this. I think we're very fair in terms of. Always, um, whether it's sponsor or not, the, the list is the list. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm dropping stuff. I'm missing PowerPoints. Anyway, this is the David P. Elric Trimontoro by MLB Cigar Ventures. That's Mike Bellady's company. Um, and Mike Bellady lands on the list for the second year in a row. Um, and Mike, that's again a testament to Mike Bellady and his company. He's done a great job here. Um, with the David P. Elric, he teams up with Ernesto Perez Carrillo Jr. to bring you this cigar. Excuse me a second. I apologize. Apologize, I had to hit the cough button there. And then I had complications hitting the cough button. How does that sound? 
technology at its best. But the David P. Ulrich Tremont Toro is a, it's a project that he's doing with Ernesto Paris Curio Jr. at the Tabacalera Alianza factory. So if you're looking at the stats, this is the second cigar coming out of Ernesto's factory to qualify for the list. And it comes in at number 24. So that's a big deal. You know, Ernesto now has two cigars this year on the list. But this one goes to MLB Cigar Benches. The company owned by Mike Bellity, and this is a Ecuadorian Sumatra wrapper over Nicaraguan binder and a combination of Nicaraguan and Dominican filler. And um, if you've heard me talk about Ernesto Perez Curio Jr. and you heard me talk about uh, the uh, Rebellious um, that was on the list at number 29, two wrappers Ernesto works really well with, Sumatra and Connecticut Broadleaf. Um, But this is not a cookie cutter uh, blend by any means. I think it's a really, really good cigar. And um, it's got some great flavors, and there's a nice spicy kick at the end of this cigar, which is something I know that Mike Bellady likes those spicy kicks he, in his cigars. He likes a little bit of oomph in his cigars. And, um, you know, he gets it with the David P. Elric uh, Tremont Toro. Now, David P. Elric, there's a story with that cigar. Uh, it's the name of a historic tobacconist um, that was located in the city of Boston. And it has a long history going back to 1868. Now, for Mike Bellity, it happened to be the place where he first purchased his uh, initial cigars when he got into things. Um, at the same time, Mike has a national sales manager named Barry McDonald. And Barry McDonald's family owned the Elric uh, store for over 40 years. Um, when Mike and Barry got together, they started looking at bringing back the, the brand name. And this time for a line of premium cigars, and uh, they created the David P. Elric line. And their first cigar is called Tremont. And Tremont is the name of the street in Boston uh, where the David P. Elric shop was born. So, they, uh, like I said, good, good job by Mike Bellity with this cigar. It's been very well received. Lands him on the list for the second year in a row. Um, again, a good cigar if you like a little bit of punch. Um, it's a nice tr- flavor transitions with the cigar and nuances along the way. Definitely a cigar you want to um, smoke a little bit more on the undistracted side because you'll really, really see there's a lot this cigar has to offer. So Mike Bellity, uh, he's uh, no Lear Jet here. There's no Lear Jets here. He lands on the list second year in a row with the, the David P. Elric Tremont Toro. Coming in at number 28, uh, excuse me, 23. <laughs> um the Casadas make the list again with the Casada Reserva Privada Barber Pole Robusto. So the Casadas have really, if I look at this list, and it seems like every year I pick a Casada cigar to make the list, this is no exception as the Casadas have been on a, I've picked them for the list five times in the last seven years. So that's one of the best runs that's out there. Um, now, the Casada Reserva Pravada line has three cigars in it, and each of those three cigars have now made the countdown. In, in 2014, the original Casada Reserva came out with the Connecticut Shade Wrapper. It was the number five cigar of the year. Last year, a second version of the Casada Reserva Pravada comes out, and that cigar is an Oscuro version of that cigar. Um, and it's called the uh, Casada Reserva Pravada Oscuro. To- um, Oscuro. Say that like five times. Um, use the Connecticut Broly Oscuro wrapper. Well, the Barber Pole is, I would think, the best way to put the Barber Pole. It's a mashup of those two releases. Um, and incidentally, I didn't mention it, but that Connecticut, uh, that pr- Casada Reserva Pravada Oscuro. Boy, I'm, I'm having some night tonight. Um, came in at number 28, so it made the list last year as well. Well, now the Barber Pole, which comes in at number 23, it takes uh, the wrapper from the original Casada Reserva Pravada and the wrapper from the Casada Reserva Pravada Oscuro, takes those two wrappers, kind of makes a uh, mashup of them in the form of a Barber Pole, and, oh, lo and behold, there's a Casada Reserva uh, Pravada Barber Pole. And, um, you know... Barber poles are really interesting. Okay, every I seem like everyone will, will want to smoke a barber pole. I think that's I think people gravitate towards them. Um, a lot of people just smoke the barber pole, but most of them I think end up coming out being a little on the overrated side. And in fact, as far as um, barber poles on the cigar coupe list go, um, barber poles have not had a good history on the countdown. The only other barber pole to make the countdown was the 724 Hustler. 
and you got to go back four years to see that cigar. And that was a great cigar, 724, earned by Kirk Kendall. That Hustler was fantastic. Very unique design of the barber pole. It's kind of a very thin, thin ring barber pole, very thin leaf barber pole. Uh, but this is more of a classic, uh, this Reserva Pravada. If you're looking at the picture, um, you can see it's a beautiful, the striking contrast of those wrappers is, is absolutely fantastic. Now, this project actually had its origins as a shop exclusive for Fine Ash Cigars out in Arizona. Um, they released the uh, Barber Pole in the form of a 5 and 3 eighths by 46 Corona Gorda. Um, and then a few months later, it makes its way to the trade show. They got two new sizes, a Toro and a Robusto. The Toro was, um, was, was excellent as well, although the Robusto is the one I picked for the countdown. Um, and it makes the list. One final note, you know, as far as the blend goes, um, it's using the Connecticut Broadleaf Escorto wrapper, the Ecuadorian Connecticut Shade on the Barber Pole. Now, this cigar features tobaccos from a 1997 crop, and that's a signature of all the um, Reserva Pravada cigars on the Casada. So the binder of this cigar uses a Dominican San Vicente wrapper from that 1997 crop. The filler also uses Dominican San Vicente from that 1997 crop, along with a little Pennsylvania Lajero to boost it up there. So uh, great cigar, just wonderful flavors about it. It's a it's a milder cigar. It's not a very heavy cigar by any means, but it's got it's got flavor. So I think folks will be satisfied for it. Um, definitely a worthy cigar at number twenty three on the countdown. So we are moving forward. Um, and number twenty two, a disclaimer again, uh, because you probably see in this we are in the Sereno Cigar Company studios. They are a sponsor of Cigar Coop. Uh, the Sereno Royale Medio Robusto Gordo. Um, so this cigar is coming out of the La Corona factory in Esteli, Nicaragua. They, they uh, make the HR line of cigars. Uh, that's Omar uh, Gonzalez Aleman who's doing that. And if you haven't heard of Sereno Cigars, you, we did a show on primetime uh, number episode 32 with Carson Sereno. Him and his father founded Sereno Cigar Company. The... Uh, as far as Sereno goes, it was originally Anthony Sereno is someone who's an industry veteran. He's been making cigars for years, mostly in the value segment. Uh, a couple years ago, he decided to launch a premium cigar brand, and Sereno Cigar Company was born. They put out four lines, and they were all excellent lines. I mean, these are just fantastic lines. They put out a Connecticut. They put out a Maduro. They put out another Maduro called the Maduro XX, and then they put out this Medio. And of the four blends... The Medio is the one that's, like, gotten forgotten about. I don't know why the Medio doesn't get the love. It is a uh, Ecuadorian kinetic, excuse me, an Ecuadorian Habano wrapper on this uh, cigar. And it is, uh, you know, Ecuadorian Habano, uh, it, like I said, it, it's not as maybe as sexy as, as the, as the uh, Maduro's or the Connecticut Shades, but, it's a, you know, Ecuadorian Habano is a very versatile wrapper. And I think it plays well with other uh, with other. Tobaccos, which is why I think so many people use it. Uh, they don't disclose the binder, but it's Nicaraguan fillers. The fillers are aged five years. Um, this is a 60 ring gauge that made this uh, list, and it's a five and a half by 60. That's the Robusto Gordo. Um, so it's the first 60 ring gauge to make this year's countdown. First time Sereno Cigar Company also qualifies for the countdown. Um, but don't let that 60 ring gauge fool you. It's a good size for this blend. This blend is complex. Um, it, I mean, it delivers notes of natural tobacco, cedar, uh, pepper, uh, nut, even a slight floral note. Uh, there's an underlying cream, creamy texture that's present throughout this cigar. It's a medium, it's a medium bodied cigar. And, um, you know, the strength level is between mild to medium to medium. So, um, wonderful flavors by this cigar. I think it's the most underrated cigar in the portfolio at this point that Sereno's got. I think this cigar is a must-have in your humidor. Uh, I think this 60 ring gauge is one you want to try. I, I think this it really sh the the this project this blend really shined in that 60 ring gauge. Beautiful presentation. Um, can't say like I said I can't say enough about these things. They are a sponsor, but the Sereno, Sereno Royal Medio Robusto is the number 22 cigar of the year in Cigar Coop. Now, our final one for tonight. The number 21 is the Diamond Crown Black Diamond Emerald. Boy, that's a weird, that's a weird name. Diamond Crown Black Diamond Emerald. I, I, 
it, it, sometimes these cigar names, they just don't work, right? But that has nothing to do with the cigar, right? Uh, this is a cigar by J.C. Newman Cigar Company. If this has not been one of the most anticipated cigars in the last four years, I don't know what is. Um, this cigar, it, it, there's a long history with this cigar. Um, and the Newmans, this is the first time they've made the Cigar Coop Countdown, but they don't release a lot of cigars, so there's less opportunities to make the countdown. Uh, but the story of this cigar goes, you go back three years ago, uh, J.C. Newman Cigar Company, um, they make brands such as, they make the Diamond Crown brand, uh, the El Baton Brick House, so they're, uh, Pearl Lamar is what they're known for. Um, they announced that they're going to rebrand uh, the Diamond Crown's Black Maduro to Black Diamond. And I guess as they were working on this project, they started interacting with consumers and retailers. And some of the feedback they got was work on this blend, change this blend a bit, you know. So they worked on it, worked on it. Um, by the 2016 IPCBR, they showcased the, this Black Diamond. It was beautiful. Packaging was great. The, the blend was, uh, you know, tweaked as well. And on Black Friday, November 25th, 2016, the, dime, the Black Diamond finally hit the shelves. And even then, it hit it in a limited capacity. It was only going to Diamond Crown lounges. Now it's just starting to open up. Uh, beautiful blend. Uh, sun-grown Connecticut uh, Maduro wrapper over Dominican binder and fillers from Chateau de, de la Fuente, the Fuente Farms, made at the Fuente factory. Uh, the emerald is a Vitola name, and so it's the Diamond Crown Black Diamond, the emerald being the Vitola name, measuring 6 by 52. I don't understand where this cigar, I have not seen this cigar on one list yet. And I'd like to understand why this has not been on anyone's list. This is a great cigar, and it was, there was a lot of work put into it, and I think there's upside with this cigar to even be higher in a future countdown. But this cigar, is, it's an ultra-premium cigar, so it's 20 bucks. That could be a reason why people aren't smoking it. But, you know, it's still a really good cigar. And um, I think, I think you know, in the end, the changes, this was a cigar that was worth the wait. It's, it's, an, it's a fantastic packaging that, that comes with this cigar. You guys see the piano boxes and the casing that comes with it. Uh, so, again, this cigar, the Diamond Crown, Black Diamond, Emerald makes the countdown for uh, this year, giving J.C. Newman a spot on the countdown. So anyway, that was our that was our PowerPoint presentation for tonight. Uh, but yeah, I'm back in. Uh, I'm back on the set. I'm back. To, I was never left the set. Um, so you know, I'm looking at the list right now. The list is starting uh, to come up. There is, um, you know, I talked about countries. We now have of the ten cigars I talked about. Five came from Nicaragua, four from uh, the Dominican Republic, and one from Honduras, which is kind of how so far past lists have gone that I've done. Is I pick the cigars, and Nicaragua and the Dominican Republic tend to be very, very close in terms of that. So, you know, the four cigars from the Dominican Republic are the, the Black Diamond, the Casada Reserva Pravada, the David P. Elric Tremont, and uh, the original Rebel, the four. The five out of Nicaragua are the Serena Royal Medio, the um, Protocol, the Blackwork Studio, the Southern Draw, and the Torano. So that's five. And then, of course, Honduras was um, the uh, Rancho Luna by Jerry. So kind of how it's kind of going according to form right now with this list. Uh, I will say the next few days you'll see this list start to take an interesting twist and turn of where it's going. So uh, we'll have another reveal. We may not have another reveal. Well, I shouldn't say reveal, but recap until next weekend on Prime Cuts. But we will be doing two episodes of Primetime next week. So on Tuesday, uh, Bear Duplissy and I will host Special Edition number 19, and we're going to Pay homage to another icon, uh, one who's kind of we don't want to forget about either, and that's Gilberto Oliva Sr. So he just passed away. We're going to do a similar show to what we did with Padron, and uh, that will air on Tuesday, 9.15 Eastern. And then on Thursday, I will be in Miami, Florida for a live remote with Charlie and Jack Tarano. You won't want to miss that. So uh, that's episode 37 of the Primetime Show, 10 p.m. on Thursday. Anyway, that's going to do it for tonight. Um, actually, let me before I w yeah, before I kind of let, oh, I did see there was a bunch of comments 
here. So um, let me kind of go through some of the comments. Wayfarer. Um, it just wasn't reviewed this year, which, uh, which is why we have a two-year window with the Wayfarer. So it gives – again, Wayfarer came out way, way too late in the year to see where that cigar is going to be. I, I, I saw it on a couple of lists, and I, I think it's a really good cigar, but I want to see where that cigar is going. Um, so, but that's why we have the two-year window. I think this is what, what, what goes as well. Um, so definitely check that out. Some good comments. David P. Elric makes it. Mike Bellity uh, was in here. So I, I, someone must have told him I was talking about him. But, um, yes, yeah, so Mike Bellany makes the list there. Wh why people are, are, like, listening to me ramble, and especially tonight because, like, I'm coughing. I couldn't get the cough button working. I, I can't get the PowerPoint working tonight. Um, I'm grumpy. You know, I'm, I've been grumpy today. Um, <laughs> I've been grumpy today. You know, some people just uh, – some people get you grumpy, so to speak. Um, and, uh, sometimes the business end of the cigar business is not fun, but, um, it's overall, it's still fun, you know, but there's, there's points that you don't get that. So I did see that as well. Um, go, I see folks about the Themis going out and checking the Themis right now. Um, you know, definitely go check out the Themis, uh, or Themis. I always say it wrong, but, um, you know, again, I think, I think solid list, uh, out of there. So. The list continues tomorrow, and for folks who – let me just kind of uh, throw something out there. Don't give up if you think you didn't make the list or get the spots you want. Uh, that's a teaser, by the way. I'm going to tease because if I, I'm screwing up so much tonight, I might as well throw a teaser out there. No, um, there, the reason I'll be honest, what we have is there's uh, – we actually have our primetime awards, which we are compiling right now. I'm real excited because the uh, the Scar Coop Awards have become the primetime awards this year, and I've actually given up two thirds of the voting power on these awards to Aaron and uh, Bear, and the three of us are picking the awards. And I think it gives us a wider selection. And what's really interesting is as we go through this process with the primetime awards, is the regionalization of the cigar industry is very much a regionalized business. And we have, like I said, I'm in the southeast, Bears in Texas, and Aaron's in California. So, and you know, I see Joe Deese, for example, he's from Rhode Island, right? And I have, a, I know the guys in Rhode Island. This is a regional business, um, and that's why I think what we're doing with the primetime awards is interesting. How we're hitting these different regions, and there's certain brands that we see working in some regions, and they don't work in other regions, which is kind of interesting. So, as we're starting to look at these, so. Um, you stay tuned. The primetime award should start coming out. We're gonna, I'm gonna finalize, and I have to do the kind of the final certification on it, and then you'll see some articles come out on that. Um, the other thing that's coming out are, is the annual top 12 cigar stories and themes in the cigar business that will be coming out January 1st. I'll be working on that this weekend, getting that polished up, and then getting it over to the proofreader. Actually, and I told the, the proofreader is gonna work for me New Year's Eve to kind of get that done. So, you know, we'll deliver on that as well. Um, anyway, so a lot of stuff happening. Um, don't give up. Don't take, you know, this list, yes, it's, I take it seriously, but, you know, you want to kind of look carefully. There's more coming um, at the end with the primetime awards. So, you know, I, uh, and we'll see, like I said, I have to still sort of, but we are compiling those, and I'm pretty excited about it. All right, that, that will do it for tonight uh, on this bizarre version of Prime Cuts where I'm just, like, all over the place and, coughing and can't get the cough button working and stuff like that um yep and uh i will hit you up chaz when i'm down in miami um it's gonna be it will be a short trip but i'll definitely make every effort all right have a great night everyone take care